know that one of the, these are the symptoms of vitamin B5 deficiency, but what causes, what are the causes of vitamin B5 deficiency? And the biggest one, one of the biggest ones is chronic severe stress. And chronic severe stress comes in many different flavors. One flavor is having a chronic inflammatory illness where you've been to multiple specialist after multiple specialist, you're not better, the medicines aren't working, and the disease itself stresses you out, but then the the inability to figure out why you have the disease stresses you out even further. So it's like compounding stress. And then everybody around you telling you, you shouldn't be sick. You know, if that, if that fits you, then that's chronic severe stress. Right. And what this can do is it can deplete your vitamin B5. Now, just like chronic severe stress can do it. So too can chronic severe inflammation, as we talked about a minute ago, Inflammation will burn through your B5 and, and uh, over time will make it more and more scarce. So we get severe stress, we get severe inflammation. A couple of other things that we know can create or, or tend to lead toward lower levels of vitamin B5 is mal just generalized malnutrition. So, you know, we might see somebody who's like an anorexic, somebody who's um, not eating adequate food overall, because where we see frank and overt vitamin B5 deficiency, are in the severely malnourished. And so most of that doesn't include people in industrialized countries, especially like the US or the UK. You don't see severe malnourishment unless somebody's self-inducing, they're just not eating. So malnutrition can be a cause. And so if your history is one of anorexia, then yeah, I mean, you might be a candidate for, for, for looking at this a little bit more closely. And then the other one, we mentioned chronic inflammation, but specifically gluten. Um, gluten exposure, for many people causes GI tract damage, which leads to chronic inflammation, but something even more important, it leads to chronic malabsorption, maldigestion and malabsorption. So diseases that inflame the GI tract that can cause malabsorption and, and, uh, and maldigestion, things like um, predominantly celiac disease, which is an inflammatory small intestinal disorder caused by gluten sensitivity, this is a big one, but other things can cause damage to the gut and the stomach. I mean, there are a number of different medications that we know can damage the GI tract lining. For example, if you're taking an angiotensin receptor blocker type of blood pressure medication, uh, those can actually mimic the damage that gluten causes. So those can cause severe malabsorption syndromes in people that lead to things like vitamin B5 deficiency. So again, if you've ever been put on a blood pressure lowering medication, that's an ARB and angiotensin receptor blocker, that, that would be something to consider. Other drugs that can damage the GI tract, we know that steroids, interestingly enough, long-term steroids, non steroidal anti-inflammatories. Um, so NSAIDs, let's just put it over here. So meds, if we're talking about meds, NSAIDs stands for non steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs but also steroids can do this. So, and then ARBs, angiotensin receptor blockers, I'll just abbreviate that as ARB. Okay, these are just different kinds of medications that again, can set the stage for damage in the GI tract that might cause malabsorption or poor digestion. Additionally, those of you who might've had a surgery, like a uh, Roux-en-Y gastric bypass, something along the lines of, of gastric surgery where you're bypassing part of the stomach acid production, because one of the things that we need to absorb vitamin B5 is we need adequate stomach acid to do that. So uh, there's there's you know there's also the, the the component of blocking stomach acid. So that would be another thing you might want to consider on this list of things that might be contributing to a vitamin B5 deficiency. But again, these first two are really um, for most people that come in to see me. These are two big ones, and then gluten is very very common. Gluten sensitivity is much more common than people give it credit for. Um, you know, the, the most celiac associations and research facilities around the world will say that celiac disease affects one in 133 people. However, my experience is that gluten sensitivity is a much more pervasive problem. Not everybody, so you got to remember that not everybody with gluten sensitivity develops celiac disease. There's a whole set of diseases that are linked to gluten exposure that have nothing to do with celiac disease. So if you don't have celiac disease, it doesn't mean that you're not gluten sensitive. In essence, everyone with gluten sensitivity uh, doesn't develop celiac disease. Everybody with celiac disease is gluten sensitive, but not everybody with gluten sensitivity develops celiac disease. Sometimes they develop other problems. So 
you have to keep that in mind. These are really, really big ones. And again, chronic meds, if you're on chronic meds, there's always a, a potential risk for the development of drug-induced nutritional deficiencies, which is a topic near and dear to my heart. I've uh, lectured worldwide on that topic for a number of years. So again, these are your major causes of vitamin B5 deficiency. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.